So now I'm recording and I'm going to just take this whole panel of color and scale it down so it takes less room. Save the file. And I'm going to head over to search for some fonts. Now I understand that some people do not like to get free fonts. If you do have an Adobe membership, you do get Typekit as part of that membership. But sometimes you might want a font that's a little bit more out of the ordinary for your design work. So when you're looking for a font for a particular art movement, it's helpful to have a font that may be already out there that represents something to do with your art movement. And so I'm going to just see what happens if I come up here and type in space art examples. And hopefully I won't just get paintings again. And we get negative space, which is really not at all what I'm talking about. All right, so I'm going to type here galactic poster and decide for myself what I think a space poster font would look like. So maybe it's something that's sans serif and very compressed, such as this. Or maybe it's something that has a very simple techie look to it. I think that kind of has a space connotation, that Guardians of the Galaxy look. This is kind of more heavy metal to me than it is space, but one could argue. Actually, I won't argue, but you could. Here's Guardians of the Galaxy again. I'm kind of digging that. So all kinds of representations of a possibility of what a space theme typeface might be. Space theme typeface. And you might already have something in mind when you're thinking about what that looks like. So for sure that is very space age looking. And I think I would find a font like this in a te techno area of Defont. So that's where I'm going to look. I'm going to go back to Defont and I'm going to look through my lists here and show you how to download and install a font in case you don't know how. I'm sorry I won't be showing how to do it for Windows. I'm sure you can find a tutorial online for that if you need one. Um, I am going to find something under the techno section here. In fact there is a techno section so I'm going to click that and start looking at these fonts. Okay, so this is Dafont. If you have a machine, you might want to do a little bit of research first. Uh, but, you know, if you're downloading a font right now. So I want to make my poster not just about space art, but I also am thinking about this topic that's always interested me of space junk. So I like this font for this one called Coalition because it has a distressed look to it. So I'm definitely going to keep that one. I'm going to click on download. And the answer says it is a heavy download and may freeze or crash the Windows font viewer. Well, I'm feeling confident and I'm not a Windows user. This is a caution for Windows users and there we go. Let's just hope for the best. So here comes coalition.zip and I am downloading it. I actually have a folder that I like to use for my fonts and it's called fonts. I made it and I put it in this doc here so that in my life whenever I downloaded fonts I could put them in the same folder every time because on my last machine I had fonts like all over the place. You know a lot of different font folders can get kind of annoying so there's my fonts folder and it's called coalition so I'm going to save that one. This one feels like it has more of a possible use as body copy. Like this is a good he headline, powerful. This might work as body copy. So maybe I'll get neur neural poll if I don't find anything that I feel is more appropriate. Um, there's that one again, Space Age. You might have to get that. So here I'll download that one. I'm still keeping neural poll in the back of my mind. I probably won't get more than five 
in the real life world and for tonight I'll probably only get three. Nasalization is kind of interesting and I'm going to compare that now to Neuropole. versus hmm yeah well I don't want this to take a long time so I'm going to just not look at every single techno font that there is and I'm going to come down here to this nasalization font and download it so all of my fonts are now saved or being saved here <clears throat> all right now next step is to go to my font folder Here it is, font. Double click. And somehow, fonts. There we go. Date modified. And here are the three ones that I have for today. And I don't know why that person thought that their 645 kilobyte file was a heavy download, but I don't know, maybe they made that in 1972. Just makes zero sense. All right, so that is now unpacked. And I'm going to double click the next one, nasalization, and unpack that folder. And now I'm going to unpack this one, space age. So I've now unzipped or unpacked all of those. And what's interesting to note here is in each of these folders, you might find different things. I have a TTF, which is a two-type font, and then this thing called Space Text, which is giving me some information regarding copyright infringement laws. But since I'm using this for educational purposes and not for a job, I am fine. And I'm going to double-click. And that brings up Fontbook and, in fact, has now installed the font. The font is now installed, and it is called Space Age. That is the first one. Let me go to the next. And here's the font. Double click. Something up. No dot in my A. And now to coalition. And there's my true type font. And there's my font book. Now all I have to do is remember the names when I start designing. And hopefully, maybe this is what the situation was. Where they were warning us. Okay, great. All right, Coalition has this very thick look to it, and it also doesn't look like it has that wonderful sort of distressed look that the original had, but we'll deal with that. So now I'm going to toggle over back to Illustrator or back over to Illustrator, and I'm going to select my text that says Space Art, and I'm going to come to my font panel, and I'm going to start typing CA, and if you notice, it is not here. And that is because I have to quit Illustrator and restart it for the fonts to install. Sad, but true. So making sure my file is saved and quitting out of Illustrator. Go back into Illustrator again and find Coalition. File open recent, and there's my space art mood board, and my font is now selected. And I'm going to the list, and I'm going to type in Koa Lishan, and there I have it, looking quite large. Oh, and yes, indeed, I do have the distressed character. I think if I change these all to caps lock key, caps lock, P A C E, there I have what I wanted. Space and switch it up here to the next one type tool I'm gonna to select the whole word that says slogan or something uh, I'll write here humans fascination that'll be fine and nasalization looks very nasal looks nothing like nasal non-nasal. 
documents. And trying to select my selection tool. Here we go. And opening up this box. You see that red plus there? That means there's more text in this box than is showing. Okay. And just for fun, I will select my text. And here is the control panel showing me text controls, which is fine and good. However, I am a real diehard text panel junkie. I liked my, like my text dialog box or my text panel where I can see my font is on 80 and my line spacing is on some other number, 96. And I'm going to change this to 80, so it's 80 font size on 80 line height, which is called set solid. And I kind of like the style of making the font letting a little tighter, perhaps, for this. So I now have that set on 80 at 65. And now here's my number 8 that I was so excited about. And again, I'm going to the regular selection tool because I know I probably want this box to be a little larger. I'm going to drop my 8 down here. This will show me what numbers and address and things of that nature will look like. And does anybody remember my third font? I do not. Okay, I'm just telling the truth. All right, coalition, nasalization, and... Even the people under 30 don't know this answer? You have no excuse. What have you been doing to burn out those brain cells? All right, I'm going to look in my finder. Which is, I don't know if I actually did that one. I hope that you're right, but because that would be easy, but I don't think so. Space age. Okay, space age. Good try. I appreciate that. And this is going to be space age. Space age, and hopefully there are numbers. Ah, oh, what a great eight. Okay, so there's the eight in normal, and I want to see what that looks like. That's all I get. Okay, so there are my fonts. Other things I mentioned that are interesting to me or that I want to explore in this, i make this a little smaller here, um, are textures and elements that might represent background area. So while I'm showing you an illustrator thing on one hand, thing, a mood board on one hand, and I said I would also show you some Photoshop stuff because we want to give equal weight to these important things. There's still a couple of other elements that I want to do to my mood board before I do this that will just make my life in Photoshop a little easier. Um, I could just do this straight in Photoshop, but I, don't know, I just want to show you some crossover things. So some textures such as stars, uh, maybe some moon surface kind of a thing. I'm going to do one more little wacky illustrator thing for your fun and entertainment. All right. I'm saving this file. I'm now going to search up. And what I'm going to search up is I want to get some moon surface. Moon surface. And I remember there was this image. There's lots of images of moon surface. Recently I was on a camping trip at Point Reyes and got to see the moon in a telescope and it was really a nice feeling. Like it really is there and it really has those little ridges on it. So I think that's kind of a cool thing, the footprint. I always like that moon surface footprint. Got a lot of them now. Okay, so I want something to remember the human interaction on the mood. This is, of course, this one is clip art. You can see it says Getty Images on it. So that's probably not a good one to take unless I want to pay money. And I don't. So now I'm going to go back to CC Search, Creative Commons Search. I believe I mentioned this last week, but at CC Search, I can search for things and not be worried about copyright infringement. The content that you search up here is licensed for public and educational use. 
Some items may have some notation on them asking for credit or even a small share fee, but for the most part, everything is non-copyrighted. So footprint on moon and Google Images. And now I see this thing here that says safe search. Notice that tells me I'm here. And I will pick up one of these wonderful moon footprints, which really aren't that great. So here's the one I want. That'll do. I'm going to copy the image. Or actually, I'm going to save the image as to my desktop. And uh, put it right out on the desktop and save. Toggle over to Illustrator. Click away. And I'm going to do the following. File, place. Okay, The place command is allowing me, bless you, to not embed this image, but rather just to have it linked to this file, which makes this file smaller, but also means that this image needs to travel with my poster, with my mood board. I'll make it a little bigger. Okay. Now, if I select it here and look up at the top of the content bar here, the control bar, you see this choice here that says image trace? This is another reason why I wanted to use it. and get this control. I have to place it to get this control. So this is giving me this control of image trace. And if I just click on it, it should, or not, uh, why? Command period. What's going on? I think I have a panel open that I can't see. So I'm going to go over here to go to image trace again. And this time I'm going to choose black and white or sketched art and see what it does. And there's the panel right down here that I am beeping at. It's saying tracing may proceed slowly. So what the heck, I'll just click OK. And this is what this artwork is going to look like if I make it into vector art. So this is a technique for taking something that is photographic and turning it into vector-based art. If you were not here last week and missed the conversation on vector versus pixels, I would write a note of that and also watch last week's video. I might have talked about it in the video, I don't remember. Right, so that's tracing, and it's turned this into vector art. That could be handy if I want to make my poster in Illustrator. So I am going to leave this here, and now finally, after doing that, I'm ready to move this into Photoshop. So with that done, I'm going to save this file. Well, the settings I picked were just black and white. So in this case, yes, but no, not necessarily. So that's a really great question. So I now I have to undo that. All right. So from this pop-down menu that says Image Trace, the choice that I chose was actually just the choice of black and white. Or actually, it was sketched art. But if I had done this 16 colors, I would have gotten a different effect. Now, clearly, this artwork is not in color. But if I put it on 16 colors, it would decipher how many grays it could fit in at 16 and make this look more like an illustration as opposed to a printed, like a block printed thing, which I think the other thing looked more like it was block printed or very gritty, kind of Xerox rough quality to it. And now this time it should be much more smooth because I'm using more colors or letting Illustrator trace this image with a greater range of color. So it hardly looks any different, but if I zoom in on it, they're shapes. So that's kind of crazy. Now, sadly, uh, there used to be a feature in Trace where you could save the colors into your palette over here, but I think that that's gone now. And I won't cry, but it is sort of a drag. It was a good thing because when you chose your tracing method, right? So now I just did undo and now it's a photo again. Can you tell the difference? Excellent. So back to the move tool. Again, if I select this with this regular selection tool and I go to this menu, window, image trace, this is related 
clearly related to the other panel. It just gives you more controls. And over here, this is the different settings of presets, low color, high color. But there used to be a setting in here. Maybe it's hiding under advanced. No, I think they took it out, where you could save the swatches. And you can't anymore, which just makes me want to cry. The idea of being able to save all these color swatches meant that I could convert them to what is known as global color. Did I show you that last week? I did show it to you again another time. But and then I could change the colors by just tweaking them ever so slightly. Nevertheless, uh, I would have to do another method to pick out these colors, which I'm not going to do right now. OK, so that's the answer to your color question. And again, I'm going to tell you about saving this. So. I'm going to, instead of just saving this, although I did save it, I'm also going to do an export. And the export option I want to choose is Photoshop. But you'll notice here, if I choose Photoshop PSD, and I now click Export, I will get a dialog box. And here it is the option to write layers that is extremely helpful. Not all of the elements that I have in this document are on exactly thing, the thing called separate layers, but I will still get much more control than if I just opened up a flattened image. So I'm going to change the color mode to RGB because that is what it will be when I open it up in Photoshop anyway. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to do that. Actually, that's not true. I can open it up in CMYK just as easily. So I'm going to click OK. And now it is making a Photoshop file out of this file. And I will toggle over to my friendly neighborhood Photoshop. And now I'm recording something other than that. Sorry, people. And let's go into Photoshop. Here we are in Photoshop. Command O for open. Space Art Mood Board PSD. Select it. Press the return key. There it is. And everything in all of its glory is now here, including the gray panel that I use to mark or mock or drop out the other stuff. To get rid of that in here, I'm going to simply use the magic wand tool. The magic wand tool selects by color tolerance. And the only color I want selected is this gray. And I have now clicked on where this gray is, and I'm pressing delete. And it is now gone. And now I've chosen deselect. So I use a selection marquee. For people who weren't here last week, I just wanted to say that I did talk for several minutes. And I'm not going to go over this, but just so that you know, I'm aware of the fact that many people are in this, in this room who do not have experience using a lot of tools. So that is a conundrum. And if you don't have tools, how are you going to do complex design projects? So what I am doing by showing you these demos is trying to help you get up and running to be able to actually be successful in this class. However, this is not so much of a software-based class. And everything that I am showing you, I'm not showing you so much from a software-based perspective as a project-based perspective. Does that seem fair and make sense? And I will continue to make these tutorials and post them but for sure, you're going to need to do some work at least two hours every week. So that being said, I'm now going to continue to work on my mood board. Another thing I want to put in my mood board. So inside of Photoshop, I'm going to create another little band or an area of space. And in here, I'm going to create another gradient. By clicking on the gradient panel in Photoshop, I'll open up the gradient ramp. And I want to add colors here. So I'm clicking, but you notice, although I've just clicked the left color stop and then clicked the blue color, I am now going to choose a color from my screen. For my first chip and for my second chip, I'm going to click the chip and choose a color from my screen. And I am flailing. Chip and color. There it goes, but not the right color. 
almost there. All right, click OK. So I've picked one color, and I'll click the next chip and choose the next color and click OK. And finally, the last chip, the last stop, the last chip, the last color. All right, I'm excited about that. I'm going to click OK. And before I leave the gradient editor, I'm going to click on the new button, and that's going to make my new gradient. I know it seems like you should press save, but it's not. It's new. So I've now saved the gradient with the new button. This would actually save palettes that you could export into other applications, and I'm not going to go down that road right now. However, if I move this slider around, I get a different gradient, and if I pull out these subsliders that I put in here at some point in my life, uh huh, I can now notice that this is a whole new gradient. It's similar, but it is not the same. All right, I'm going to click OK and make sure that I'm using this tool I never get to use, which is this weird thing. It's called the fold gradient or angle gradient. And how it works is you can click and drag and create this really interesting sort of edgy gradient. I just think that's an interesting thing, so I wanted to try it. Okay, having tried that now, I'm now going to leave that little spot, and I'm going to go to the linear, the radial gradient tool, and I'm going to make a little radial gradient here. That just kind of makes a spot, not that exciting. And then finally, I'm going to use just the linear gradient and just drop it in here. So I'm telling myself I'm going to use linear gradients maybe like this and like this. And lastly, I'm going to do one more thing here, and that is I'm going to pull out this magenta stop and click on this blue stop here and make it more blue and darker and create a circle with this elliptical marquee click and then click and drag and making sure here that again I'm going to choose gradient and making sure that the lighter color is on the left so I'm going to click reverse now the lighter color is on the left and I'm going to use the radial gradient with the lighter color on the left and the radial gradient chosen I'm going to come towards off center so this would be center somewhere over here. I don't know if you can see my mouse moving. And then I'm going to go off center and then a little to the left and click and drag from that odd spot over to the edge. And I've created something that feels like a globey kind of look. So I might have some kind of planet shapes in my design. So that's there. And I'm actually going to undo that. Shift Command Z, Option, Option Command, Option Command Z because I meant to add a new layer. Now I have a new layer and I'm going to put this back in and the reason why I want this on its own layer is because I want to be able to create an interaction and the interaction is going to occur uh, between this top globe gradient and the color underneath. And for this layer one I'm going to change this setting from normal to overlay and see what kind of interesting thing I can have there. So I'm saying that I might be doing some kind of interesting weird overlappy things in my space art poster that would represent that. Now I realize I'm not looking at space art for my reference because I know space art. Space art and I go way back. The only other thing that I think I want to pull in here is a couple of pieces of space junk. So here's how I'm going to do that in final. Finally wrap it up, okay? So I'm going to tab back over to search for a astronaut glove floating in space. And if there is an astronaut glove floating in space, that person has a frozen hand that just <laughs> fell off their hand, and that would be a bad thing for them. So you would hopefully never see an astronaut's glove in space, but there's an astronaut's glove. How about just an astronaut's glove? Eh. I'm not that excited about my astronaut's glove options, but I'm still going to pick one anyway. I'm going to go with this one. Those are pretty cool gloves. And I'm going to now control, click on this, and copy image. Command tab and toggle over to Photoshop. Command V and paste my little tiny glove. Command T to resize my gloves. 
I'm going to click and drag. I know they're not going to be sharp, but it'll be okay. And I'll bring this over here. There are my gloves. That is important to me. But I think I really only want one. And now is the tough choice. Between which glove? What do you think? Both for the back of the hand. hand. Votes for the front of the hand. All right, people want the front of the hand. The people have spoken. Delete that. Deselect. Say what? Was that the lasso? That was the polygon lasso tool, my friend. Thank you for making me say that word. And V for the move tool. I'm going to move my glove up. And then I'm going to do a quick hack here. Uh, or maybe not. Maybe I'll just do normal and I'll choose lighten. No. Normal and I'll choose darken. No. And I'm going to leave this on normal. Coming back to my magic wand tool, I'm going to click on the black outside of this, holding the shift key, collecting as much of these black pixels as I can. Now you might be thinking that I'm going to delete this black outline area to my glove, but I am not. I'm going to use a different method. Instead of erasing, I'm going to use a non-destructive method called a layer mask. For those of you who do not know what a layer mask is, this is the button right here. The glove is on its own layer. The selected area is selected, and I'm going to click on this button here, which is Add Layer Mask, and then click on the Layer Mask side of the now masked glove and do Command I, which is Invert. So I made a very quick mask by clicking in the background where the black is, right, and inverted it. And so now, if I want to do things with my glove, Command-T, I can do that. So there's a glove, and press the Return key, and now that is scaled. And I think I will get a like an abandoned satellite. You know, or just a satellite. This is a good one. Control click, copy image, command tab, command V, command T, click and drag, V tool for move. All right, are there any elements that I think I might need in my mood board? I can't think of any right now. I might decide later to add something, but this is a mood board created both in Illustrator and in Photoshop, giving a general impression of the fonts, colors, kind of imagery and elements that I would be using in my poster about space or rec honoring space art, celebrating space art in a promotional piece. And I'll talk about the designing the promotional piece uh, next time. All right, folks, so I'm going to save this file, save as, and it should already have the name of Space Art Mood Board, and it is done. To flatten it now and to send it to me, your instructor, you would go to File, and you could do a number of things. You could export it as a JPEG. You could do File, Save As, and flatten it into another file type, such as a TIFF. TIFF file format is a really good one if you wanted to put this inside of a report in InDesign. You wanted to show this mood board as part of a whole study on a case study of a design redesign. You might want to make this a TIFF. But I'm actually not going to do either of those. I'm going to do file and I want to do a save as, am I telling the truth, a Photoshop PDF. And for some reason, I am, there it is. You would probably be best to send me a PDF. It'll be the smallest file size. I'll be able to open it easily, even on my phone. So when you finish your work and you want to send it to me, when I say it's time to send it, please save it as a PDF. All good? All right. So there is my art board PDF. I still have the PSD file. I still have the AI or the Illustrator file. And I'll save it as a PDF. 
and I don't really know, I don't really need editing capabilities. So now it is saved, and if I go to Acrobat and I open, I should be able to find my PDF and it's flattened and ready to go. So that is an example of a mood board. This is not showing every single thing that's going to be in the poster, but it's clearly showing you some of the things that are going to be the main elements. And you can deviate from here, but it, it's just to get you thinking in the right direction. Right, any questions on anything I've covered so far this evening? Yes, question. We wanted to use the pad to make our 